Hello, and welcome to Reddit Rewind, where we cover the most ridiculous stories on Reddit. Today, our first story is titled, Karen tries to withhold benefits and doesn't like the consequences. I used to have a veteran's disability pension, a VDP, for a hearing defect. It's now merged with my state pension. It was small and back home was paid annually. However, I moved to the UK and this pension was still paid by my government, but now administered by the UK DWP, Department of Works and Pensions, who paid it fortnightly. Some years ago, I was entitled to a disability allowance, a DA, because of various issues. At the time, I was diagnosed with diabetes, but was trying to control it with diet. So I got called into the local job center for an interview. Unfortunately, I had a Karen for an interviewer. I'm on the spectrum, but I'm high functioning. This means that I don't suffer fools gladly, and I am very rules bound. Firstly, she questions why I haven't declared the VDP as part of my earnings. I had, but it was in another part of the form. Then she said that I couldn't have diabetes because I wasn't taking any medicine. And as I was telling Porky's, she would not allow my claim. Now, the DA claim had nothing to do with my diabetes. However, she was stupid to put in her letter of rejection that I hadn't diabetes because I wasn't taking any medicine for it. She also said that they would no longer pay my VDP. I sent a copy of the letter to my high commission, who said, don't worry, they would deal with it. I handed a copy of the letter to my doctor, who was incessant. She complained to the DWP, asking about Karen's medical qualifications. So I got asked to have another interview about 1 p.m. on a certain day with the Karen. I said that I couldn't guarantee to attend on this day as I had another appointment that morning. The message back from the Karen was, if I didn't attend, my claim would be refused. So going with the flow, I said I would try to attend, but I might be a little late. So I have my morning appointment, go home, change, and toddle off to the job center. I get there on the dot of 1 p.m. only to find that the Karen has booked an interview room on the first floor, instead of the ground floor. There's no lift. To cut a long story short, it took me nearly 15 minutes to haul my sorry ass up those stairs, and in the end being helped by this guy in a suit who asked why I was trying to get to the first floor. I told him that I had an interview and that the Karen who was seeing me chose the room. So I get to the room and the Karen says, You are late, and I am refusing your claim unless you have a very good reason. So I said to her, Well, my day has been interesting. You were warned that I had an appointment this morning and because of it, I might be late. Karen, I want you to tell me about this appointment and exactly what happened to make you late. Me, I turned up to the appointment this morning, took my clothes off, and then had two nice ladies slather my meat and two veg with lube. They then proceeded to do things to said meat and two veg. They then got me to lie down on my side facing the wall and one of them proceeded to stick her fingers up my butt. Karen, how dare you talk such filth in front of me? Your case is closed. Suit, who was listening out of sight? Uh, excuse me, Karen, but you did ask him to tell you about his appointment, and exactly what happened to make him late. Suit to me, how did your prostate examination go? Me, more tests, unfortunately. Suit, and... Was that the reason why you were late? Me. No, the stupid bitch was being vindictive and interviewed me on this floor instead of the ground floor. She knew my claim was because I had breathing problems and couldn't climb stairs. I think she would have claimed that as I made it to the first floor, I was lying and refused the claim. Suit. Uh, I think you're right. Suit to Karen. You will prove this DLA claim as I had to help him up the stairs and based on my observations, he qualifies. And you and your manager will report to me tomorrow at 9 a.m. in my office to explain your actions. If you are late, you will be terminated. Karen, very white-faced. Uh, yes, sir. Turns out, he was an area director that the DWP had sent to investigate the high level of complaints about that job center. It also turns out that a complaint from a high commissioner about a breaching of an international agreement is a big deal for the DWP. Who knew?
Well, it looks like this guy's interviewer really was a horrible, horrible, controlling Karen type. In the end, it really does look like karma did catch up to her and this guy got what he deserved and she got what she deserved. So I read a few posts in the comments section and picked a few that I enjoyed. Here's the first one. Well, I feel as if she's getting what she deserves. She had no right to tell you you didn't have diabetes when she had no medical training. Then on top of that, to put the meeting on the first floor where she knew you were going to struggle because of your health issues, just so she can try and deny your claim. What a despicable, hateful woman. And then another comment on top of that one. I hope her disciplinary meeting is on the 99th floor. And another comment. Without a lift. That's important. No, so this story, it sounds like this Karen was really awful. It just sounds like she was being a horrible person and not helping people with their claims and rejecting them because, I don't know, maybe she didn't like the way they look or maybe she was just being a vindictive, horrible person for weird reasons that we don't know. But in the end, if, you know, this story is true, then it sounds like she did get what she deserved. And I hope her disciplinary meeting did not go very well for her because... Her job was to help people, and it sounds like she wasn't really doing it. Okay, guys, so on to our next story. This one is titled, Pastor Lies, Cheats, and Steals. He gets exactly what he deserves. If you want to read on YouTube, that's okay with me. You can call me Kaldra or OP, as my username is not that easy. Sorry, I'm on mobile. Also, I'm sorry I need to be very vague about where this happened. The cast, Pastor Bob, not real name, contractor, me, Kadra, or OP if you want, setup. I have been a computer technician for more than 15 years. I have worked on all kinds of computers, everything from tiny point of sale computers to large rack server computers. I had been attending a new to me church. I was trying to date a woman there. This church was her idea. That relationship crashed and burned, but that's a different story. Now we can start. It was about five years ago. I had just sat through a long sermon about generosity and giving to those who need help. At the end of the sermon, Pastor Bob asked for an additional donation because the church's roof needed repairs. And it would cost 20,000 US dollars. That's right, 20,000 freedom dollars for a new roof. After the service, I'm talking to my date. Pastor Bob walks over to me. I said hi, and he introduced himself. We talked a bit. Pastor Bob asks what I do for a living. I tell him I'm a computer tech with a shop. As I'm telling him, I have a feeling he already knows what I do. Pastor Bob asks me to have a look at his laptop. It's being very slow, so I agree. I turn the laptop on, and I hear a clicking noise. This clues me in it's probably the hard drive, but I can still access the data. This is a good thing because it means I can probably recover the data. So I tell Bob the hard drive is dying and it needs to be replaced. I also tell him I can probably recover the data. Pastor Bob asks how much it would cost to fix. I tell him for most people, I would charge around $250. However, I feel I can donate my time so it would just need $60 for a new hard drive. Pastor Bob agrees, so I write up an invoice. New hard drive, $60. Labor, zero. Data recovery, zero. And two to four days for repair. Pastor Bob signed the invoice. Thus, I take the laptop to my shop. I open the laptop. HP, why do you use so many screws and clips? I get the hard drive out and connect it to my recovery rig. I set up the recovery to clone the data to a new hard drive. But not the new one for the laptop. A high-end storage drive. I go home after locking up the shop. Next day, Monday, I open the shop and check the recovery rig. It's working, but will take at least 10 more hours. So I start work on the other ticket. Then, at closing time, I lock up and go home. Next day, Tuesday, I've had Pastor Bob's laptop for two days. I open the shop and check my recovery rig. Good news, recovery completed 100% data recovered. Report says, hard drive developed too many bad sectors. Now, I have a choice to make. I could put a one terabyte hard drive for $60 or a 120 gigabyte SSD for $60, or I could pay some money myself for a 250 gigabyte SSD for $100. I decided why not, and I put the 240 gigabyte SSD in the laptop. 
I then clone all the data over from the new recovery storage drive to the new 240 gigabyte SSD. So I check everything. The laptop works great and is exactly how it was before the first hard drive died. Even the login still worked. Therefore, I call Pastor Bob and tell him his computer is done. He says that's great. He will be here soon to get it. About 45 minutes later, Pastor Bob walks in. I show him his laptop working and much faster. He loves it and signs the pickup form. He then pays me with a check for $60. It's important he paid with a check. I do a bank run on Monday and Friday. So, that Friday at the bank, I am informed that Pastor Bob's check is void. What? Why? Pastor Bob had placed a stop payment on the check. Consequently, I call him and he ignored my call. I go to church on Sunday. Pastor Bob gives a sermon about not lying. I walk up to him and he avoids me. So, I leave and decide I'm going to write it off. I spend a hundred bucks and some time to do something nice. A few weeks later, a customer walks in looking for a new computer. To welcome him, I offer him a drink and go over his options. I'm chatting him up and he tells me he's a contractor. He mostly does siding and roofing. He is thinking about offering solar. That's why he's getting a new computer. I ask how much does a new roof cost. He says it's about $10,000. So I ask him why would someone say $20,000. He had no idea. I thought it was strange. I asked about the church. Contractor said it would be simple and around $5,000 and he would probably do it for less. Contractor buys a nice new laptop. Sorry the setup took so long, the revenge starts now. Something about what the contractor said bugs me later. Why would Pastor Bob lie and say he need $20,000 for a new roof? And why would he stiff me for $60? I then remember I never cleared the recovery rig storage drive. I check and there is Pastor Bob's laptop data. I look around, it's slow, and I'm all caught up on repair tickets. Fittingly, I look around a bit. He has had all of his logins stored in a folder on the desktop, including his online dating logins and online poker. Did I ever mention Pastor Bob is married? I start printing his online dating messages. I look back and find Pastor Bob has been adult hugging several women from his online dating. He had been paying for his dates from the church's donation fund. I am getting angry now. Then I realize he had adult hugged the woman I was dating when I was dating her. It was then I decided to break Pastor Bob. I printed out all his dating messages and the women he adult hugged for the last six months, except I refused to print the naughty pictures. It was an impressive packet. I then decided I needed copies of the packet. Therefore, I ordered 100 packets printed from a major online printer. A few days later, my order of revenge packets arrived. These revenge packets are amazing. Double-sided, staple-bound, with a cover of Pastor Bob's face on it. Now the conclusion, and I think it's worth it. This church had a calendar of what the sermon might be about. A perfect Sunday was approaching. I go to the church that perfect Sunday. I show up a bit late. Everyone is in the church, so I put a revenge packet on each car. I have a few revenge packets that are in yellow envelopes. Fittingly, I put them in the mail. I sent one to all the high-ups in the church. I sent a special packet with some of Pastor Bob's naughty pics to Pastor Bob's wife. I sent the return address to the church. I also emailed a bunch of people the revenge packet from a burner email. A couple weeks after, I went back to the church. Pastor Bob was gone, so was the wife. Several of the women were also gone, including the one I was dating. I asked one of the important people there, what happened? The answer was amazing. I was told about the revenge packet and how everyone had gotten one. The day my revenge packet appeared, the sermon Pastor Bob had given was about the evils of adultery and cheating on your wife. Thank you, church calendar. The fallout. Pastor Bob was fired and shunned. Multiple women from the church have not returned, including the one I was dating. Pastor Bob's wife is divorcing him, and she's the one that owned the house and cars. No longer Pastor Bob is now being sued by several people, including the one that fixed the roof. He never paid any of them. There were also rumors of a criminal case for embezzlement. No one has seen Bob in a while now. The church might close if they can't find a new pastor. But the church's money is very low. Apparently, he had also spent over $30,000 on online gambling. TLDR, 
Pastor lies, steals, and cheats on his wife with multiple women. Gets found out and doxxed. Gets fired, divorced, and arrested. And no one knows I did this to him. Notes, because you might ask, it's quite possible that several of the very young children and babies of the church were his. But I cannot confirm this. I have no idea where Bob is now. I would think still in jail. Edit. Thank you so much for the awards. It's amazing. Wow, okay, talk about a scummy, scummy, scummy story with a scummy pastor. I can't believe this guy was using the church money to gamble and go on dating websites. This is, the, the hypocrisy is unbelievable. And good on OP for sniffing out how he was using the money, how he was embezzling, and then letting everyone know so that karma would bite this guy in the butt. I am so happy this hypocrite got what he deserved. After reading a few posts in the comment section, I thought I'd share a few. Here's the first one. Adult hugging is a fantastic euphemism. Agreed. I'd never heard the term adult hugging before, but it's a, it's a fun, interesting, nice way of saying uh, intercourse, relations, all that stuff. Definitely made me laugh when I read it the first time. So our next comment was something that I also was wondering, and it's, did you get your money back? And the OP answered with simple, nope. Well. My comment to that is, that sucks. But all in all, I guess him only losing 60 bucks, and of course for spending a little cash for printing the stuff out, was well worth it in the end for getting revenge on this guy. And the last comment I found to be interesting, it's very strange how often church roofs need replacing. And also around $20,000. My roof is 15 years old and good for another 10 years. The roof of husband's church has been replaced three times in the last 30 years. And of course, like a good sucker Christian that he is, he always opens his wallet to help. Yeah, I've been noticing that too, how a lot of churches will ask for donations to help fix up the place and get it back in tip-top condition, especially with the roofs. Obviously, upkeep on such buildings are expensive, but it is interesting how this poster also noticed that they tend to need repairs a bit more often than other buildings. Don't know why that is, but good point, good point. I can definitely see why this poster was a little curious why that happens so often. So it's a, it's a good point. I don't have the answer, but um, yeah, it makes you think. Okay, guys. Well, those were our stories for today. I hope you enjoyed them. Please tell us what you think in the comments down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Till next time.